How's it going, everyone? My name's Tom. I'm gonna fix last week's mistake. Great. So please stay tuned. It should be uh, a messy one. Garage time. All right, last week's mistake may have been a blessing in disguise. I was working on this uh, hatch panel and this panel is a access panel to get to the attachment points for the rear of the roll cage. They, co they go right onto the coilover turrets. And I accidentally put this flange on the wrong side. So anytime you make a mistake like that, it's best just to walk away from it. And uh, I came back, well, it's almost a week ago now, but I'm coming back to it fresh. I've thought about it a little bit more. And I think it actually might be better to have the flange on this side because in order to get this flush from the inside, that would mean having to put this in the hole, secure it on the back. It also means having to maneuver it around the roll bar tubes, which to do both at the same time is gonna require, you know, even bigger holes on this, and it's probably gonna make it just too cumbersome. So the reality is um, this is in a very sight unseen part of the car. In fact, it's probably gonna get covered with uh, at least sound deadening material, maybe carpet. So best thing to do is just continue the flange all the way around. Some of you suggested that in last week's comments and just, you know, stick it right on there. So that's what we're gonna work on today. Let's get going. To get started, I'm gonna try a cheap paint stripper method that was recommended to me last week in the comments. It's basically just brake fluid and acetone, one-to-one -one mix. And you know, brake fluid tends to eat paint when you don't want it to. So maybe I'll try this, maybe it'll work. We'll see. Well, let's see how the makeshift paint stripper worked out. So this has been like uh, 18 hours or something. So it, it's not coming off super easy, but it comes off a little bit. Let me try a wire brush. I think it would work better on this side, which is just paint. But uh, either way, you know, I'll keep it in the bottle and use it next time.
All right, a short pause while this cools down to explain what happened here. As I'm um, making the flange on this lower half, it is a pretty steep um, bend right here. And as much as I tried to cut this straight across on the car, it actually is gonna have an offset due to the three dimensions. So when this piece um, folds down, it's going to, you know, one, it's gonna make this piece too short, and it also needs to kind of go, you know, inward or downward a little bit. So it's a complicated shape right here. That's why I broke this piece up into two. Yeah, so that's exactly what I was worried about was gonna happen. So if you look at how this flange is now following the shape of the panel, um, as it went around this corner, it starts to, it wants to stay um, inside. So when you look at it from the back, you can see how this 3 8 inch or almost half inch band starts to disappear down to nothing. So I'm gonna have to do even more sections on this flange in order to get it to be an even distance all the way around. Hey, while I'm working here, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, um, like the video, share the video, leave a comment. All those things are good indicators that uh, this is content that YouTube can share with other people. So I appreciate that and uh, let's keep going. All right, take a break for an update. Um, I did get the, uh, the flange, you know, I basically brute forced it around this, this feature here. So um, you saw how this flange didn't wanna behave as it went over this curved area. It had a tendency to suck in. So by uh, doing some relief cuts and sort of massaging it, I was able to get it so it's a pretty even um, displacement over the edge and you know, there's I, the more elegant way to do this would have been to use a shrink, shrinker and stretcher. And I have access to one of those, but by the time I drove to it and, you know, calculated all the different sort of positions and stretching, where to stretch, where to shrink, it, it would have taken a lot longer. Luckily, um, the TIG welder is pretty gentle. So, you know, where you have to splice and weld, it doesn't really put a lot of metal back on. All right, I'm down to the last little section here. It's uh, just this piece here, this is the bottom portion, and I just have these little ribs I need to deal with. So I'm gonna try to take this uh, flat sheet and just mark the bend locations and try to reproduce it the best I can, get it pretty close, and then I will um, kind of hammer and weld as I go.
So this is all the way around now, and I was able to get these, you know, dimple shapes into the uh, the flanged area. So I'm hopeful that this is going to follow the shape of the what's remaining in the firewall in the car. So um, this is not fully welded in. I just tacked it in kind of random places. Only places that were fitting well is where I tacked it. So I didn't do any sort of, you know, pretty spacing or anything like that. Um, I may go back and uh, make it look a little better after I clean it up. But for now, it's just a matter of, you know, getting the rough shape in and making sure it fits the car. Also, you can see now that I'm, uh, I have a car cover on the car. I'm trying to protect it now that it's in its final primer. Okay, so it looks like these tabs right here, I don't know what these are for, probably something to do with the rear seats, but they are in the way. There's one right here, and there's one right here. It's barely just interfering on the corners, but otherwise it's fitting you know, pretty flush all the way around. So the roll bar tubes are gonna be coming from here, basically directly up. So that corresponds to a hole right about here in, in this panel. All right, so now it's time to um, put the holes in this panel. And I think I'm gonna go with some pretty small screws. I don't wanna add a lot of weight to this. And so I have these in my, my toolbox, I have these M4 um, screws. I'll probably come up with something that looks a little nicer than these, but this is the size hole I wanna drill. I'll probably drill like a five millimeter hole or four and a half millimeter hole. And I'll use quite a few of them so that I can compress the gasket to try to prevent fumes from coming in. Now, I don't think this is a structural piece. This is really just a firewall um, separating the occupant cabin from the engine. And I, you know, even though it's a monocoque chassis, I, I just don't think this thing is going to change the structure of the car at all. So that is a lot of holes. Taking out all these screws is gonna be a, uh, a minor inconvenience for all the access that you're able to get. I put these at a close tolerance with the screws so that if I need to open up the holes again to get the screws to all line up, then I'll do that afterwards. Um, I just wanna mark the holes with the tight tolerance and then I'll go back and open them up, like I said, if I need to. So that's the next step. I've lifted her up, as you can see. I'm um, trying to take a peek underneath from the backside. So let me show you from there. So when the engine compartment's open, you will see this, um, this seam along the back here. And uh, it looks pretty nice because it's flush on this side. I have some little magnets holding it in place. 
And what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to position this panel inside the cutout so it's even gap on all sides. You can see kind of the shiny metal versus the original ugly metal. All right, that marks everything and I should be able to just pull this off. Yeah, those magnets are super strong. All right, here's an interesting find. I just decided to take these, um, these seat belts out because I was you know, tired of tripping on them. And um, I unplugged the wires and I quickly noticed that there is a jumper um, between each of these. So someone in the past in this car has disabled the safety warning to keep your seat belts um, fastened, which you know in old cars you used to be able to do pretty easy. Here's the little wire right here. I got a whole string of these uh, nuts here and they're just soaking in muriatic acid to strip off the zinc plating so I can weld them to the back side. You can see they're just bubbling away. I'll just line up the holes. And then put a screw at the 12 o'clock one. Okay, here inside the engine bay, and I got, you know, all but two of these welded in. You can see I tacked on the right, tacked on the left. Some of these got a little extra hot, um, so I'm hopeful that I didn't weld the screw to the nut. So I'm going to go inside and uh, try to get all the screws out and clean up the threads to make sure that it's going to be trouble free next time I need to take this out. Also, I'm going to create some method of getting to these, uh, these lower guys. They're hidden behind this uh, brace. But I did get all of the uh, screws out, even this one in the corner that I was kind of worried about. It was tight. I just cracked it free. Um, I hope the threads are okay. I'm going to run a tap through there just to double check. And then I'm still left with uh, this hole and this hole with nothing behind it. I made these nut plates a little extra long, so I'm going to be putting these on the, the back side. Okay, I've drilled some holes adjacent to the holes that I, I need to put the nut on the back side. So these two holes here are new. So now the next thing to do is to put these new plates on the back. So I am going to um, smooth this out on the back side, clamp this as tight as I can, and hit it really hard with the TIG welder and just melt these two pieces together. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> 
Okay, so that should do it for all the uh, the nuts. I got um, nuts on the back side. I think there's 20 of them. And I also fixed this hole that I drilled here when I was cutting out those uh, extra brackets. I think they're for the seats. So that's been fixed. I'm gonna go ahead and put these screws back in. These are kind of toasty. They're just regular, um, you know, pan head screws. I think once this all gets painted inside here, I'll probably choose something a little bit fancier, maybe some, uh, some socket head cap screws or something with some finish washers on them or something that looks a little bit better. All right, I've gotten all but one of the screws in and they're all just in loose as you should if you have a large number of screws to put in. Just leave them loose till you get them all started. All right, that's all of them in. Um, it sounds like a drum, right? So definitely no rattling and there is no gasket behind here. Um, I'll probably just slather some seam sealer on there or something that doesn't really dry and that should um, create even more of a seal. So there you go, crisis averted. Who cares if it looks like a battleship door? Please stay tuned next week. Next week, I'm gonna be doing another major uh, suspension modification. Something I was on the fence about doing before and I've just decided Let's do it. So it's a big one. Please check back next week. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you already haven't done so.